Welcome to the channel guys. In this video we're going to be looking at finding the common denominator between a pair of fractions. In some cases it may be the lowest common denominator, in others it may just be a common denominator. I'll cover that more in example three. So in this instance this, this is perhaps not as common to see this sort of question but you may get one of these so this is, this is quite nice to see. Sometimes it'll be as simple as one of the denominators, that's this number on the bottom remember, it's the numerator on the top and the denominator on the bottom, so we'll just write those on there. The numerator and the denominator. And obviously we're finding common denominators, so it's making sure the bottom numbers become the same. In this instance, the first thing we'll check for is do any of the numbers go into the other one? So does this denominator go into this one? Or does this one go into this one? Well, you can quite clearly see that 2 would in fact go into 8. So what we'll do is we'll make 8 our common denominator there. Okay? Now then, what we'll do now is we'll need to look at what did we do to the 2 to get to 8? Because what we, what we have to do is whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. So we've decided that 8 is our lowest common denominator here. And what we need to do now is we need to make the top, the numerator, match. So here, we times 2 by 4 to get to 8. So 2 times 4 is 8. So on this arrow here, I like to put a little note for myself that we times this fraction here or rather the denominator <clears throat> and the numerator here by 4. So 2 times 4 is 8. So we need to do 1 times 4. And that is 4. Okay. So now a half is 4 eighths. Which it is because 4 is half of 8. You can double check it that way sometimes. And if you look over here. Well we actually haven't done anything to this one. 8 was 8. So that's 8 times 1 is 8. And then the 3. Well, we haven't done anything to that either because we didn't do anything to the bottom, so we don't need to do anything to the top. So in some instances, if the bottom numbers will go into one another, so if 2 will go into 8, for example, or if maybe it was thirds and sixths, 3 would go into 6, and thirds and ninths, where the 3 would go into the 9, that's all you need to do. You just have to, you just have to mix one of them, fix one of them like that. In example 2, we'll have a look at what happens if 1 won't go into the other. Okay? Stick with me. Okay, example two. Three, the lowest common denominator, or common denominator between three, three quarters and one sixth. So, four cannot go into six, and six cannot go into four. So, there is a way that we can do this, and we can find out which number appears in each of the times tables. We need to know which number is a multiple of 4 and a multiple of 6. Okay? So, in order to do that, we can quite simply just write down our times tables. So, if I do the 4 times tables here on the left... Okay, I won't go any further than that. And then we do the 6 times tables here on the right. Okay, I won't go any further than that. Now then, what we need to do is we need to have a look at which number pops up in both sets of times tables here, which is a common multiple. Okay, so we go down here and 4 and 6, 12. 12 appears in both. Okay. Now I know obviously that will mean that 24 appears in both because obviously 24 is just double 12. But what we're looking for here really is the lowest common denominator. So the lowest common multiple here between the 4 and 6 is 12. So what we'll do is we'll make 12 our lowest common denominator. So we'll write it out like this. Now then, like in example 1, all we have to do is we have to look what we did to the bottom number to make it the new denominator. So what do we do to 4 to make 12? Well, we've done it over here. So we've times it by 1 2, 3. And that's given us 12. So we need to make sure we times the top number by 3. So now, 3 times 3 is 9. Let me just write that there. 
Now then, to the other side, because this time we have changed something, haven't we? We've changed the sixths, we've changed sixths to twelfths. And we've, we've timed six by two to get to twelve. One, two. So we'll put times two. Well, arrow there, just to remind us of what we, it is we're doing. It's nice to present it in this way, in a, you know, with the arrows going down, to show the steps that you've taken, just to, to help you think through it and to make sure you can check easily if you need to. And now we'll do 1 times 2, because remember, whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. So 1 times 2 is 2. And that's it. Now we have the denominators that are the same. So we have the lowest common denominator. Well, in this case, it is the lowest common denominator. Okay? Right. In example 3, we're going to look at what happens if there are no simple common multiples. There is a way, and this will work for anything. So let's get cracking with example 3. Okay, here we are with example three. This way of doing things is my personal favourite. Okay, this is the one that I teach all of the children in my classes. The reason for that is because it's very simple, very effective, and it works every time. There is no need to write out the times tables. There's no need to work out if one goes into the other. There's no need to work anything out other than a simple multiplication. Okay. Um, and the way to do that is to multiply one denominator by the other. Because if you multiply two numbers together, you will, you will get a common multiple. So if you multiply two denominators together, you will get a common denominator, okay? So in this instance, we've got two thirds and three sevenths. So all we're going to do is we're going to multiply the denominators together. So we're going to multiply three by seven. And three sevens is obviously 21. So now we know that our common denominator is 21. In this case, it is actually the lowest common denominator, but oftentimes it won't be. But that doesn't matter. That doesn't mean it's wrong. You know, you won't really ever be expected to just find the lowest common denominator. And if you do have to do that, you can always just simplify afterwards or use one of the other methods that I've shown you. But for finding common denominators so that you can add and subtract fractions and manipulate fractions in other ways, this is a really quick and effective way to do this. So let's crack on with this. So now we've times 3 by 7 to get to 21. So we'll put times by 7 there. And obviously the opposite to that, we've times 7 by 3 to get to 21. So we'll times by 3 here. And now all we need to do is we need to do what to the top, what we did to the bottom. So we did 3 times 7 was 21. So now it's 2 times 7 is 14. On this side, 7 times 3 was 21. And now we'll do 3 times 3. And that's 9. And there you have it. You've got common denominators there. And you didn't have to do any times tables. You didn't have to do too much work in terms of figuring out if one fits into the other. It's really simple. Multiply the denominators together and make sure you do to the top what you do to the bottom. If I was to teach one way and one way only, this would be the one. Because for me, this is the most simple and the most effective and the most consistent method for finding common denominators. I really hope this video helped. Remember, if you find the channel useful, please like, share and subscribe to help other people out. Thanks and see you next time.